Today's going to be Prince William, the uh, Prince of Wales, and now the Duke of um, Cornwall. So that's interesting. So anyway, this will be the video today. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. So these last few days have just been a rundown on the Royals to kind of see if the cards can give us an idea of where their headspace is right now. And nothing could be more important than the Prince of uh, Wales, who is now Prince William. So that's what we talk about today. Um, hope you like it. Okay, so the Prince of Wales. Let's see what is going to come up for him. Interesting that we get to know uh, these people differently. I mean, not just King, King Charles. So the Prince of Wales, that's who we want to um, think about today. William Prince of Wales. I mean, this is interesting. He's got an interesting act to balance, if you think about it. So his mother, uh, he remembers walking behind the coffin of his mother with his tiny uh, brother, Harry, who was about half of his size at the time, and probably being a very supportive brother at the time. He remembers uh, the privacy in Balmoral that uh, Charles and um, the Queen and uh, the family around them uh, surrounded him and his brother with uh, during that first time. He remembers walking behind the, the casket, and in, why, in doing uh, in dealing with the queen's death, he's also looking at what he knows he's going to repeat in ten years or so. And he's thinking of in ten years, his young son will be a teenager, or uh, at the very least. When that happens, his young son will be a young man, you know, a 20-ish young man, when he becomes next in line to the throne and waiting for his dad to pass, who will probably be 55 or 60, you know, he'll be waiting 20 years or more. So these are all the things Prince William is able to look at his life from the very first time that he saw trouble and determine um how things are going to look in the future. And it's amazing to me that he doesn't see the value in just healing up this thing with his brother. But before we do anything, let's have a moment of meditation. Okay. Prince William. Let's do just a three card pull at first to get uh, a temperature on uh, Prince William. Why do I have these upright? Okay, this will be one, two, three. Give us something to zero in on these three cards to put us on the road to some knowledge about uh, Prince William. First card up, ah, oh, well, that's it, death, of course. Uh, what was I just talking about? Uh, that whole little dissertation I had was all about this, and uh, and it's what he's dealing with at this very moment. And uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Prince William, what is your temperature right now? So we have death. Uh, the next, and strength, wow. So yeah, I would say the cards are listening, and the last thing, that is helping to determine and look at that the high priestess and we had the empress in the last reading for harry so it's along that same vein you know some sort of feminine nurturing superior knowledge um you know the queen so very interesting so we're saying what is william's temperature right now and we get death thinking about all the series of deaths that are going to happen 
you know, this really puts it, uh, makes it very real. Uh, the death that he's dealing with at this very moment, uh, the strength that's required uh, for the whole rest of his life, actually, and uh, and hopefully being guided, uh, you know, in a uh, feminine, uh, comforting way from somewhere. You want to say Elizabeth, you want to say Diana, you want to say just the universe. So what can the cards tell us now? That was pretty specific and pretty spooky, actually. Uh, so what can what kind of story can the cards tell us about Prince William? It seems like he would understand the value of just getting this thing with his brother healed and opening his eyes to maybe what's going on that he doesn't necessarily see. Um, who knows? So Prince William, Prince of Wales. What can the cards tell us? Six cards to begin with and if maybe another four. One, two, three, four, five, okay, six. Prince of Wales. What can the cards tell us? Okay. The uh, first card, signifier for this diet across, we could make it bigger. Uh, the signifier card then is Four of Wands. Interesting, Four of Wands. So this is, uh, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement, getting things done. Uh, the Four of Wands, somebody, people call it the wedding card. It's a celebratory card. I always think of it because you look in deep into this card, you see a castle, you see a big uh, archway in the back, you see some other celebrating going on way back here. I always think of it as a smaller celebration on towards something bigger. And so um, if we're looking at the celebration of the monarchy, and, and this could be the monarchy in the future to come over and over again. Signifier card is, I would say, this is um, the, the um, improbability that these celebrations uh, would be so um, tainted. The uh, challenge to that, with this Knight of Swords, of course, the Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, and here we have this knight slaying this dragon, and so, um, and the knight is the fighter of the royal court. So the challenge to these celebrations, which are so happy and so full of joy, is being the knight to uh, bring forth the justice of that truth and uh, that law. That's the challenge. He's really, really, uh, let me get a sip of water. I think this is really bringing things into focus for him in a way maybe that hadn't been so quite so real. Yeah, and then the bottom of it is the Eight of Coins, which is really getting everything practiced and perfect. And then, in the past of this reading, with the Lover's Cards, very interesting because this is telling us, you know, there was, there was union, there was closeness uh, that was in the past. What does it remind you of? In the sky of this reading, then, just to give us an idea of where uh, Philip's head is, uh, William's head is, I'm sorry. In the sky of this is the caution that we need to make sure we, we have with the truth, justice, rules, and law. Be careful before you get up. You could get hurt. And that's where he is. He's, he's being too cautious, perhaps, about uh, making up, advancing this uh, friendship. Too cautious. And the uh, likely outcome of the first part of this is the Five of Swords. Again, truth, justice, rules, and law. And this is an abuse of power. And I would think it's more of a misunderstanding of the power that's held here. You've got one, let's say, brother walking off from the other. You've got the redhead held here holding on to truth and justice and rules and law. And you've got the other brother turning his back on all of that and walking away. So the last four cards for what's up with uh, Prince of Wales, William. The very self of that question. Look at that, the magician. And this turned up for Harry too. So this is really having just a, a choice of things that you can do to remedy a situation or at least to move it on. So that's the very, you know, there are options for him. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, and the <laughs> it's in the environment of what? Moving everything on to calmer, safer water. And the hopes and the fears for that, for Prince uh, William, okay, is this Eight of Swords really feeling trapped by the very same, look at these swords have just come up all over this, this reading, and really feeling trapped by those, all those rules, all that law, uh, all that justice, uh, what is the right thing to do? 
And the fact is with this card, as we always know, that this person can easily maneuver their way out. They can uh, shred uh, these binds uh, very easily and uh, and know how to get out of that uh, entrapment. And then the final outcome for this, Prince Wales, is a uh, disaster. Well, you know what? It always has to be a disaster because when he becomes king, of course, just like it is right now, it will be a disaster. And maybe that's where his head is at, because we have asked the cards, where's his head? So let's read it over very quickly. Uh, Prince of Wales, uh, Prince William, what's going on with him? And it's amazing first three cards that we got. But anyway, so he starts out with, you know, these uh, smaller celebrations, okay? So, yeah, the, but they always lead to something bigger, uh, with the, and those celebrations are actions. And they're challenged by being that knight, uh, the one wielding the truth and the justice and the rules of the law, fighting for the monarchy, slaying the dragon, and underscored by really getting your value, your craft practice down to a T while doing that. And in fact, in the past, we had, you know, closeness, friendships, uh, love uh, connections uh, that uh, are, are in the past. And that's so sad. And in the sky, this is understanding the same truth, justice, rules, and law is what you really have to be weary of. And then uh, the likely outcome of that is uh, really turning your back uh, on uh, your brother in this card with the uh, abuse of power. And then the um, self of that very question is with this magician saying, you know, open your eyes. This magician's eyes are closed, but open your eyes and take a look at the choices that you have to get this thing done. But it's in the environment of moving on to uh, less troubled water. And all the swords showing up in this reading is amazing because here again, we have it in the hopes of the fears. Really, it's those, all those rules, all that truth that's keeping you trapped, but you can get, you can do it. Just uh, apply yourself. And then the, but the sad thing in your mind is that your happiness always depends on a disaster happening in the future. And it'll be the same for your son. And what have you gotten yourself into? And uh, could there be some, a little bit of jealousy for Harry because he really, uh, you know, he's going to escape a lot of that, he was still suffering through the same tragedies, but uh, it won't uh, be quite the same as it is with you and your son. I am always so um, amazed at how well the cards respond to the questions. You know, I do a deep meditation before I do the reads, besides the little uh, uh, meditation that we do during the video, uh, to try to really get focused and ask for lots of help on that. So I hope it's uh, it showed up uh, in this uh, reading. If you don't agree with the uh, what I'm telling you on, on these readings, let me know. Just put a, a remark in the comments, but, you know, be kind. And uh, let me know what you want to read on, because I'll read on that. Just tell me. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is one of my favorite decks, Golden Tarot by Cat Black, who's an Australian uh, artist. And this is uh, all digital here. Um, I love this box. I mean, look how special it is. And, and it's easy to get the stuff out and use it. I mean, it's like a little uh, presentation. There's no fumbling at all. So, except when I use it. Now, the booklet is pretty good, too. It's, Cat Black has written this, it seems like. And so there's a good explanation in the front as to her concept for the artwork, which is amazing. It's usually, it's about from the 12 to the 1500s, which she uses in here, which is like cut and paste digital artwork. And then in the back, it talks about her. And uh, she's a webmaster and author and artist. And she also, she actually lives in uh, Western Australia uh, with her cat, Ellie, by the way. So... And I love uh, my uh, tarot reader, Ellie, uh, Dreams Down Under. So she'd be tickled to know this, I think. Uh, so anyway, let's look at the cards. Um, my other favorite uh, uh, reader, uh, Violetta, uses these cards exclusively. They're the only cards she'll use. So there you go. They're beautiful, though. And they're not hard to handle. They're a little slicky. And when they're new, they're very gilded on the edge. And then as you use them, of course, that starts wearing off, which is sad. But um, but they're beautiful, they're easy to read, they're Rider White uh, iconography, and you can figure out what the card means without any uh, problem whatsoever. And I actually read that Cat Black, the artist, uh, got her first tarot cards when she was 15. So, you know, she's someone who designed it uh, with, uh, you know, practical knowledge uh, at hand, not just commissioned to do the art, I think. So, anyway, I love these. I hope this is interesting for some of you. Uh, to look at the different cards when I do this, and uh, it's a good way to mix them up. And uh, so there we go. We'll get this uh, game going here. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come, so ciao for now.
really make a big difference. Thank you.